Hello, my name is Mary Pan, and I'm the organ scholar at Gloucester Cathedral. Today I'll be talking about the flutes and strings on the organ. So the different stops of the organ come in groups called families, and two very important families are the string and flute families. So firstly, you might be wondering how do flutes and strings make a tone? Well, they, they make a tone in much the same way as a simple whistle or recorder. So air is blown into the pipe and directed at a sharp edge called a lip, and this produces a resonating column of air within the pipe. So another question people often ask is, why are there so many different stops? Well, one, we group them into families, so that makes it a little bit more manageable, and then within the families, there are different qualities and pitches to every stop. So it's a little bit like having a family with a grandfather, um, a daughter, and a little boy. So every one of them are different in their own way. So for example, um, some of the stops will have longer pipes, which mean they have a deeper tone, and some of them have shorter pipes, which make a higher tone. And then also the shape of the pipe make a big difference. So for example, flutes tend to have a fatter body, so larger diameters, and this makes a nice, rich sound. And on the other hand, there can also be narrower um, pipes with smaller diameters, and this results in a shriller sound, and that is the case for most string stops. Um, in addition, strings and flutes can be made from different materials, mostly from metal or wood, and that would also make a difference as far as the quality of sound. So um, there's so many different things that I could say about the stops, um, but I'll, I'll just speak about one important thing each for the flutes and the strings. So um, flutes come in a lot of different pitches. So for example, I have an eight foot flute drawn right now, and I will play a chord. I'll just play the um, C major triad at uh, middle C. And that is the pitch that you'll hear on the piano. On the other hand, I can pull out the four foot flute. So, you will notice that my hands did not move. I played exactly the same keys, but the pitches are an octave higher. And this is because the length of the pipes that I just played are half as long. And then finally, yet another octave higher. Yes, so flutes come in all types of different um, pitches, and that's why there are so many of them. And then, um, the strings are often associated with peacefulness um, and restfulness, and this is because they often come in the form of two stops that are drawn together. So usually, they are the eight-foot solitional and the eight-foot celeste. So these are two members of the string family, and they're exactly identical in every single way, except that the celeste is tuned slightly sharp. Um, so if you think about two people singing and one person is a little bit off, what ends up happening is you hear this undulating sound because the sound waves are fighting against each other. And this actually makes for us this beautiful, distinctive, ethereal, vibrating effect.
that was a little bit of a piece by John Stanley played on just one flute. Next, I'm going to talk about how flutes and strings can be used together. In choral accompanying, it's common to use just the strings for the softest part of the piece, and then to add the softest eight-foot flute to that in order to increase the volume. It adds not only sound, but also a richer texture to the sound, but is quite subtle. there are certain flutes and strings that are imitative and sound like um, instruments in the orchestra. One example of this is the harmonic flute and here in the great organ we have one stop that sounds very similar to the harmonic flute called the Spitzflute, which I will play momentarily. <laughs> 